When running collaborative multi-location trials, it is important that all collaborators collect data using the same methodology. This allows researchers to combine datasets and compare locations objectively. In this video, we highlight the key traits that are routinely collected in optimal N nitrogen stressed maize trials and demonstrate how data should be collected and recorded. We indicate the time frame in which the data should be collected and the rating scales to be used. Where possible, collecting data on handheld loggers, we reduce the time required to enter data into electronic files for analysis and the errors that can be generated during this process. Data from handheld loggers can then be copied directly onto electronic field books, saving time and reducing data entry errors. A wide variety of electronic data loggers are available in a wide variety of models and prices. At planting, collaborators should note the following features. Planting date. This is the date that the trial was planted. Local checks. Often, trials will have a provision for collaborators to include local checks as a control. In these cases, the collaborators should clearly note the local checks that have been used. And this is date is the date when 50% of the plants in the plot have started shedding pollen. Anthesis is characterized by the extrusion of anthers from the tassels and the shedding of pollen grains. Anthesis date should be collected from both optimal and stressed trials. It is recommended that the anthesis date is also recorded on the plot tag to assist researchers with selection when viewing trials. Silking date is the date when silks have emerged in 50% of the plants in the plot. Silking is characterized by the emergence of silks from the shoot and usually occurs after anthesis. Under stress, silking may be delayed considerably. Silking date should be collected from both optimal and stressed trials. It is recommended that the silking date is also recorded on the plot tag to assist researchers with selection when viewing trials. Plant, one. plant height is the distance in centimeters from the base of the maize plant to the first tassel branch. Plant height should be collected from a minimum of five representative upright plants in a plot to obtain an average. First, the tassel branch, 135 centimeters. Plant height should be measured approximately four weeks prior to harvest from both optimal and stressed trials. Border plants should not be measured. Ear height is the distance in centimeters from the base of the plant to the insertion of the top ear. Point of insertion of the uppermost ear. Lower ear, the uppermost ear. 120 centimeters. Ear height should be collected from five representative upright plants. Border plants should not be measured. Ear height should be measured approximately four weeks prior to harvest from both optimal and stressed trials. Root lodging is measured as a number of plants per plot displaying symptoms of root lodging. Root lodging is characterized by lodging at the base of the plant, causing characteristic curved or angled stem development at the base of the plant. The number of plants with root lodging should be collected approximately one week prior to harvest to provide a reliable estimate of potential harvest loss. Root lodging should be collected from both optimal and stressed trials. Border plants should not be considered.
stem lodging is measured as the number of plants per plot displaying symptoms of stem lodging. Stem lodging is characterized by breakage of the stem beneath the ear and is indicative of poor stock strength. The number of plants with stem lodging should be collected approximately one week prior to harvest to provide a reliable estimate of harvest loss. Stem lodging should be collected from both optimal and stressed trials. Border plants should not be considered. The total number of plants harvested should be recorded just prior to harvest. This data enables calculation of the percentage of plants demonstrating poor traits, for example lodging or bad husk cover. In nitrogen stress trials, the edge plants should be removed prior to harvest and not included in yield analysis. The total number of ears harvested should be recorded at harvest. This data is used to determine prolificacy and prevalence of ear rots. It is possible to obtain fewer ears than the number of plants harvested due to barrenness or more ears than the number of plants harvested due to prolificacy. 13, 14. 14 ears in total. Rotten ears. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 rotten ears. But husk cover should be recorded as the number of ears per plot with incomplete husk cover or exposed ear tips. Poor husk cover favors infestation of the grain in the field with storage pests such as weevils and grain borers. It also encourages the development of ear rods. Various ear rots commonly affect maize grown in the tropics. Amongst these are Fusarium, Aspergillus, and Diplodia ear rots, each with its characteristic symptoms. Fusarium and Aspergillus ear rots are particularly important as they are associated with the production of hazardous mycotoxins. Fusarium ear rots are characterized by a pinkish tinge and stubborn symptoms on the grain. Aspergillus ear rots are characterized by the proliferation of dark green fungal growth on the cob. Diplodia ear rots are characterized by dense, white mycelial growth between kernels. The total number of ears affected by all ear rots should be recorded at harvest in both nitrogen-stressed and optimal trials. Maize grain can be differentiated into four texture groups. Flint Semi-flint Semi-dent and dent. These are given scores of 1, two, three, and four respectively. Green texture should be recorded at harvest from both optimal and stressed trials. Immediately following harvest, dehusked healthy maize cobs should be weighed in the field to obtain field weight. Field weight can be measured using either a standard spring scale or an electronic balance. Where possible, an electronic balance is preferable to reduce the risk of operator error. Prior to recording data from each plot, the scales should be teared. Field weight should be recorded in kilograms to two decimal places. Field weight is often the most important dataset collected from experimental trials. After harvest, ears from each plot should be shelled to provide grain weight. Shelling can be done manually 
or mechanically. Where possible, it is preferable to use a mechanical method to reduce time and error. Drain weight can be measured using either spring balances or electronic scales and should be recorded in kilograms to two decimal places. Where possible, grain weight should be recorded in both optimal and nitrogen stressed trials. Grain moisture should be recorded during the collection of field and grain weight. If there is a large delay between obtaining field weight and grain weight, grain moisture should be collected twice. Grain moisture is obtained by shelling grain from the middle of cobs from a representative mixture of ears and then using a moisture meter to determine moisture content. Various types of moisture meters with various grain requirements are available at varied costs and with various grain quantity requirements. Leaf senescence is scored on a 1 to 10 scale at various intervals during grain filling. In low nitrogen trials, most plants are chlorotic and the senescence score refers to the percentage of dead leaf area resulting from nutrient stress and remobilization of nutrients to the reproductive sinks. A score of 3 indicates that the lower 30% of leaves are necrotic. 5 indicates that 50% of leaves are necrotic. 7 indicates that 70% of plant leaf area is necrotic. 10 indicates that the entire plant is necrotic and effectively dead. Leaf senescence should be rated in all nitrogen stressed trials at 2, 4, and 6 weeks post anthesis. Where available, near infrared spectroscopic grain analyzers can be used to assess grain protein, starch, and oil. The process is high throughput, taking 60 seconds per sample and non destructive. A minimum of 500 grams of grain is required for this purpose. The near infrared analyzers are calibrated to grain color and therefore different calibration curves are required for white and yellow grain. Plant aspect is a composite visual score given by breeders to rate the overall plant performance of a variety. It incorporates key traits such as ear position, plant architecture, tussle characteristics, and disease prevalence. Plant aspect is scored on a 1 to 5 scale where 1 represents excellent plant type, yield potential, uniformity, low ear position, vigorous, good stock strength, among other traits, and 5 represents a poor plant type, low yield, lodging, diseased and discolored leaves, and poor tussel exertion, among other traits. Plant aspect is typically scored 6 weeks post-flowering prior to the onset of crop senescence. Ear aspect is a composite visual score given by breeders to rate the overall harvest performance of a variety. Ear aspect incorporates key traits such as yield, ear rot, texture, ear uniformity, seed set, and ear symmetry. Ear aspect is scored on a 1 to 5 scale where 1 represents excellent ear type, flinty, disease free, large, straight and uniform rows, and 5 represents a very bad ear type, small, rotten, and non-uniform. Gray leaf spot or GLS is a serious foliar disease of maize prevalent in many mid-elevation subtropical regions of the world. The disease is caused by Cesaspora ziamidis and results in characteristic rectangular lesions on leaves which reduce photosynthetic leaf area. In severe cases, 
lesion squalies, resulting in total leaf necrosis. Tarsicum or northern leaf blight is the most common foliar disease of maize in subtropical mid-elevation regions. The disease is caused by Exerohelum tarsicum or ET and results in characteristic cigar-shaped lesions on maize leaves that reduce photosynthetic leaf area. In severe cases, lesions coalesce, resulting in total leaf necrosis. One indicates that the maize plant is free of symptoms. Two indicates that symptoms are restricted to the lower leaves of the maize plant. Three indicates that symptoms have progressed to the ear leaf with lower leaves heavily infested. Four indicates that symptoms are found throughout the plant, but heavy infestation is restricted to the ear leaf and below. Five indicates that the entire plant is heavily infested with symptoms causing extensive necrosis. The ratings should be collected just prior to crop senescence, usually six to eight weeks post anthesis. Maize lethal necrosis or MLN is a viral infection of maize caused by double infection of maize sclerotic motile virus or MCMV and seropotivirus such as sugarcane multivirus or SCMV. The viruses can be transmitted by infected seeds mechanically and by insect vectors such as thrips and aphids. MLN is a new but important disease of maize in Africa and was first documented in Kenya in 2011. Symptoms of MLN are complex and include mild to severe mottling on leaves, usually starting from the base of the plant, stunted growth, shortened internal distance, dying or necrosis on leaves, necrosis of leaves in the well, dead heart, tussle sterility, and poor seed set. MLN may be scored on a 1 to 5 scale where 1. The plant shows no MLN symptoms. 2. Fine chlorotic streaks on the lower leaves. 3. Chlorotic mottling throughout the plant. 4. Excessive chlorotic mottling and dead heart. 5. Complete plant necrosis. <laughs>